Hi, this is John Whitaker for the Mathematical Analysis 1 class, and uh, our last video lecture uh, had a uh, break in it, and so this is going to be the conclusion of lecture 2, and what we had left off was talking about set theory, and in particular we had talked about uh, what it meant to be a union of the two sets, as we were talking about operations on sets. And so let's recall what was to be uh, a union. And so as a definition, given two sets, say A and B, the union of A and B is denoted by A with a cup of B, A union B, and given by A union B is equal to the set of all elements A, such that X is in A or X is in B. So to be in the union, you have to be in either A or B. You might be in both, but you could be, or an element might be in both, but it has to be in at least one. Uh, the word associated with union uh, is or or plus. Okay, so we're combining them together. And so as an example, if uh, you let A be equal to, let's say, 1, Two, three, six, and B be equal to, let's say, one, three, four, and nine, then A union B is equal to one, two, three, four, six, and nine. So, uh, 1 is in uh, A union B because 1 is in A. 2 is in A union B because 2 is in A. 3 is in A, so that makes 3 B in the union. Uh, 4 is in B, so it gets in the union. 6 is in uh, A, so it's in the union. And 9 is in B, so it's in the union. That's an example. Okay. The next uh, type of set operation that I want to describe is that of difference. So given two sets, say A and B, the difference uh, between A and B is denoted by A minus B and given by A minus B is equal to is the set of all elements X such that, I'll get that line means such that, X is an element of A and X is not an element of B. So to be in the difference between A and B, you've got to be in A, but cannot be in B. We'll look at a uh, nice example. I hope it's a nice example. So as an example, 
Let's let uh, G be equal to uh, the set containing money, uh, easy bake oven, maybe a, a train, a doll, and a tool set. And we think of G maybe as gifts that the uh, parent is going to give uh, to uh, their children. And then there's this set R, which includes an uh, easy bake oven, train, and a big wheel. And so maybe these are uh, objects that are being recalled. And so what you could be asked is, what's G minus R? What's the difference between G and R? And so to be in G uh, minus R, you have to be in G but not in R. So uh, money's in G, and I get to write it down as long as it's not in R, and it's not, so it gets written down. An easy bake oven's in G, but it's also in R, so I don't get to write it down. Uh, a train's in G, the train's in R, so I don't get to write it down. A doll, it gets to be written down. A tool set is in G, and it's not in R, so I get to write it down. And that's what G minus R is in this situation. But someone might ask, well, what about big wheel? Why isn't it in G minus R? And the answer is, to be in G minus R, you have to be in G. And big wheel is not in G. Okay, so that's, that's what we have. That's an example. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is another operation. So another operation on sets that we want to look at is called uh, the complement. Here's a definition. Given a set A, the complement is denoted by a prime or a superscript C and given by a prime or a complement is equal to it's first of all, it's the universal set minus A or can be thought of as all the X's such that X is not an element of A. So when we think of complement, we think of everything not in the original set. And of course, the universal set, if you remember, was the set of all uh, objects or elements of interest. Let's look at an example. If the universal set, that must be given to us when we talk about the complement, is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And A is equal to, let's say, 2, 5, and 6, then A complement is equal to 1, 3, and 4. So A complement consists of the guys that are in the universal set that are not in A. And you might think of the word complement uh, as something you've heard between partners, maybe business partners, and uh, where, where it's used in that context is that we say that one person complements another. It's uh, if uh, the characteristic that one person doesn't have, the other one does have, and vice versa. And that's uh, the same type of setting that we're using the word complement here. For when you take the complement of a set, you're talking about taking uh, the things that aren't in the first set. They don't have anything in common here.
है That ends uh, what I wanted to say about uh, set theory. And what I want to move on to next is just a little bit of a notation, and then we'll get into course content. <clears throat> so it's notation that I'll be using. The first thing I want this is something we've seen, and this is element of. Let me write it down. is this symbol, which means subset. The third thing that I haven't shown you before is, in terms of symbolism is this upside down A, it will mean for all. Fourthly, this backwards E, it means there exists. A fifth bit of notation is this symbol here, an exclamation point, and that means it either means uh, unique or it means uh, factorial, depending on the context that it's being used. And lastly, uh, there is this backwards looking element symbol, which uh, I won't use so much, or just the initials ST, and what that represents is such that. So that's some notation that we need to be familiar with. Uh, the phrase such that is used quite often in definitions or uh, facts in mathematics, and uh, so I'll be using ST a lot in terms of uh, the lectures that I give. Okay, we want to go ahead and get into uh, course content. And so uh, we want to start off with uh, a definition of an ordering, an order on the set. So here's the definition. It says, let script S be a set. Okay. Then an order on script S is a relation okay, so it's a relation uh, denoted by less than okay uh, with the following properties So first thing, it says uh, one, well, let me start this way, uh, for uh, x being an element of script S and y being an element of script S, one and only one of the following. So here are the possibilities. We could have that x is less than y, or uh, x equals to y, or uh, y is less than x. So one of those, exactly one of those things happens, and only one of those things. And two, uh, for x, y, and z in script S, with x being less than y and y being less than z, then x has to be less than z, so it has this transitive property.
A closely related definition is uh, an ordered set. is a set, script S, on which an order is defined. Okay. So as an example, if you take a look at the rational numbers with less than defined by less than defined by um, let's say r is less than s uh, if s minus r is a positive rational number Then Q, the set of rational numbers with this less than, is a is an ordered set. This definition of less than satisfies what it means to be an order. Okay. Next thing we want to do is talk about um, bounds for a set. So uh, here's the definition. Suppose script S is an ordered set. E is a subset of script S. Okay? That's what we have. So those two things are happening. If uh, there exists a beta element of script S uh, with such that uh, the following are satisfied. Is that x is less than uh, or equal to beta for for all x element of e, and two if uh, alpha is uh, I'm sorry. Just that is what we want to have satisfied. So just says that the following is satisfied. Okay. Sorry. We say uh, that E is bounded above. And beta is an upper bound. Oh, forty. There's one thing that I didn't define that I should have. That's involved in this definition. I should have defined it previously. But uh, as a notation. 
we say that x is less than or equal to y if either x is less than y or x is equal to y. So that's what we mean by that. Well, if we can define what it means for a set to be bounded above, we can define what it means for a set to be um, bounded below and what it means to be a lower bound. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, so here's the definition. It says, uh, let a script S be an order set And let E be a subset of script S. Okay. If there exists a beta element of S such that um, uh, X is less than, or sorry, that beta is less than or equal to X for all x element of E, then we say S, I'm sorry, E is bounded below and beta is a lower bound. So that's the analogous definition. And what I want to do next is to look at several examples. So here, we will have a set of examples, and the context which the examples will exist is we'll uh, let uh, Q uh, with our definition of less than be the ordered set uh, in consideration. what we're looking at. Then our first example, we're going to let E be equal to the set containing, well, it's containing a bunch of numbers, infinitely many numbers to the left, and minus 11, minus 10, up to minus 9. Okay, so that's our first example. Then, um, E is bounded above So, um, what's it bounded above by? As, well, as, let's say, a 1 is an upper bound of E. Okay, so E is bounded above because there is a rational number, particularly 1, that's bigger than or equal to everything in E. 1 is not the only upper bound for E, uh, so is minus 7, so is minus 9. Okay, minus 10 is not an upper bound for E. Uh, also note that E is not bounded below. A second example. Let's let E be equal to Q, a set of rational numbers. Then, uh, E is not bounded above, uh, nor bounded below.
Okay, let's continue with a few more examples. Three. Let's let the E be equal to something like uh, four thirds, three, seven, and minus twelve fifths. Then E is bound above. As, let's say, 7 is an upper bound. Okay. How is uh, 7 upper bound? Well, 7 is greater than or equal to everything in E. And so that makes it an upper bound. And since uh, E has an upper bound, it's bounded above. Uh, also, E is um, bounded below. as uh, minus 12 fifths is a lower bound. So minus 12 fifths is less than or equal to everything in the set. Okay. It's not the only lower bound. Uh, minus 3 is also a lower bound that is a rational number. Remember, we're working in the context here of being within the rational numbers, okay? So E is a subset of rational numbers. The rational numbers with that less than definition as a relation is the only, as an order. It's the only uh, things that we're looking at. We're not looking at all real numbers. A fourth example is if you look at the set E, which is equal to, let's say, minus 1, minus 0.01, I'm sorry, minus 0.01. Minus 0.01, minus 0.001, and so forth. Then E is bounded above as 2 is an upper bound. Uh, 2 is bigger than or equal to everything in E. Uh, one thing that's clear about E is it contains, everything that it contains is a negative number. And then uh, E is bounded below as uh, minus 2 is a lower bound. It's bounded above and below. Let's look at one more example. So, still in the same setting. If we uh, have uh, a fifth example, if you will, where we look at E equaling to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth forever, then E is not bounded above. E is bounded below as uh, minus 3 is a lower bound. want to do is uh, make a definition that's kind of a particular uh, upper bound. Um, let's go ahead and do that.
So here is the definition. It says, uh, let script S be an ordered set. E be a subset of script S, and E be bounded above. Okay. okay. Um, if uh, right, let's say, suppose there exists an alpha element of script S. Uh, such that first thing is that um, x is less than or equal to alpha, and that's for all x in E. Or other words, and this is the way that the, the book lists it. I should have written it this way. What that said was that alpha is an upper bound. E. Two, um, if, let's say, uh, gamma is less than alpha, then uh, gamma is not an upper bound. is called the least upper bound of E or supremum of E and denoted by alpha equals to the soup of E. So let's look at an example. So again, if you let, uh, uh, if you consider Q with less than, as we've defined it previously, um, as an ordered set. Let E be equal to the set containing minus 1, minus point 0.1, minus point 0.01, minus 0.001, and so forth, then 0 equals to the soup of E. It is the, 0 is the least upper bound of E. So uh, what, how does it uh, satisfy being the soup or least upper bound of E? Well, notice that uh, 0 is an upper bound of E. And if you give me anything less than 0, anything less than zero. That's going to be a negative number, and eventually there's going to be uh, some element from this number, some element from this set, uh, that is bigger than the number that was given to me that's less than zero, as this set keeps getting closer and closer with that bound towards zero. Okay, that should uh, be enough information for this lecture. Thank you very much.